Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at this pocket watch. And at first glance, you would say, well, that's just a normal pocket watch. But this is a pocket watch which has the cylinder escapement. And the cylinder escapement is basically the fear of a lot of watchmakers. And that has to do with basically how crappy it is. <laughs> um, and crappy in a way that, well, it was a cheap escapement to produce. And it was made using, well, it was made using simple tools. Like it could be made being simple tools. But it is really susceptible to wear. So basically, they never were really good when they were new. Um, but now, when you see a watch or a pocket wax like this with a cylinder escapement, it has probably a lot of wear and they are really. Like, it's not easy to repair. So that's why they are considered as um, watchmaker's nightmare. <laughs> um, typical about the cylinder escapement is that. You don't have an answer. You only have cylinder escapement, which is a, basically the balance wheel is the answer. Um, and I'm going to show it under the microscope um, in a bit. But the problem with that is normally you are allowed to get the balance out um, because the answer is still blocking the power of the gear train. But, since there is no answer, you got to disarm the watch before you take your balance out. And, like I said, this one has rubies. Um, no, this one doesn't have rubies, actually. Um, but, they are not very well quality, so chances are, um, if you take the balance out, then you are not going to be in for a good time because probably one of those gears is going to get stuck and you will end up breaking some axles. <laughs> but yeah, um, under the microscope you go. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, I will just do doing a service on this. There's not really much wear and tear on this one. Um, so I probably will just give you a look at it um, when to any repairs but we'll see if there is a repairing coming it will probably be in this video so oh, to the microscope so here we have the cylinder escapement in the good view of the microscope um and one of the most things like one of the most problem causing things is how you can see the teeth on the answer wheel how sharp they are so basically a bit of wear and like they are not sharp anymore reducing the amplitude and like there's already not a lot of amplitude even when they were brand new um, another thing is there is a tiny pin here you can kind of see the shadow of it like it moves too fast that's because there's another pin under here, uh, under the balance bridge, um, which stops it from turning too far. <laughs> because if it turns too far, you could damage the escapement. So, like I said, it doesn't have much amplitude, but if you would, like, give it a shock, give the pocket watch a shock, it might be able to turn the escapement further than it would with normal amplitude and break stuff. So that why, well, that's why there's a stop. I will show it when I get um, the balance out. Um, but yeah, like for the rest, the movement is pretty much like you have your, your ratchet, you have your main barrel, you have like part of the gear train, which is reduction. Uh, like you have your little... Um, pin here to set the dial correctly basically it's 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 a pretty normal watch except the escapement is different um 
so yeah i'm going to pop the movement out of the case now and then i will remove the balance and i will show you that so let's get it out of the case so there's one cage screw that i can see here so i'm going to loosen that up I can't reach it. <laughs> Where's the other screwdriver? Here it is. Oh dear, it's stuck. <laughs> but it seems it's already open, so without forcing something, let's try without it. Let's get a winding stem out with this little screw and then I am going to pop the lid off. And now let's see, does it come out or do I still need to um, try to get that screw out? Yep, it seems like it wants to pop out. Yes. Yep. Okay. So now let me get a movement holder. <clears throat> well, I didn't got a movement holder, but I got a lot of discussions, um, which is fine. So let's get the watch hands off with a presto uh, and the second hand can i get it off in a decent way yes Okay, second hand is off. Now, there are those two sugar bread screws, like we call them. Let's loosen those so we can get the dial off. They are holding the dial feet. This one was already open. Now, with some persuasion, we should be able to get the dial. Off. So I'm gently going around the movement. style feet is putting in some resistance like a lot of times they are bend a bit so just pushing them out is um, a good option like some people really tighten their screws a lot um, making it so that um, the feet get bent a bit so they don't want to get out and there we have the dial off so here can we see the mechanism um, to um, change in between winding it or changing the stand of the dial um, but yeah so back to the microscope to show you the escapement so here we are back under the microscope. So I uh, disarmed the, the main spring and I already removed the screw. So we can go straight into popping the balance off. If it wants to. Come on. 
Okay, now we need to wiggle it out. Yeah, uh, seems like I it's going to be a two hand drop. So two hands, two tweezers. Okay, so now let's get the movement out of the way. And now we need to see what blah. You should be really careful because those um, taps of the axles are really fragile and they are a pain to change out. <laughs> so. Now we can have a look at the tube, which is hollow, as you can see. Let's focus on that instead of... So that's basically your answer, what you're looking at there. So let me get it out. So this cut out in the tube, that's basically what your answer is. And that's where the teeth get stopped while the answer is turning. Well, so yeah, um, let me see. And where is that little pin? Oh no, it isn't a pin in this case. It is a little block. Um, so here you can see that little block. That is what's stopping um, this pin in case the balance goes too far. Um, also, another interesting thing that you can see really clearly on this balance wheel is those uh, cutouts. Uh, basically, they, they drilled holes in it. This was to make sure that the center point of gravity of the balance wheel is in the center. This is something you will find on all watches, all mechanical watches at least, but um, because I think there were really low manufacturing tolerances when making these watches. They are really huge, so you can see them very well. Um, but yeah, in fact, they're on every watch. Uh, for the rest, yeah, you have your very typical, um, hairspring. Um, the regulating levers are the same. Um, yeah, it's basically... The thing is the same on a, on a, on a cylinder watch with an escapement, but, uh, but just not the escapement. Um, so yeah, now we are going to go hop on the computer um, for a screen share um, because I want to show you basically how it works. Because I can't really show it on the live watch because a lot of things are in the way. I would need to fancy a transparent um, balance which somehow, which I don't have. <laughs> so yeah, up to the computer we go. So here we are on the Clockwatch website. It is a really good website if you want to take a look at all, uh, like how all those escapements work. <clears throat> this website uh, needs a flash plugin to run. Um, I will put it in the description together with that plugin. So here we can see what I couldn't show um, earlier um, in the movement itself. So you can see um, the blue part here is um, the part of the cylinder that isn't cut out um, and the rest is what is cut out. So you can see that the um, the teeth of the um, anchor wheel rests against the side of the cylinder and then when it comes by it goes in and then it goes out and comes so this is basically um, yeah the escapement um, and then um, because it always um, 
is to the side of the cylinder tube um, it is a frictional rest escapement um, because it doesn't have recoil it doesn't push put uh, pushes the anchor wheel back um, at some point but because um, the anchor wheel rests against the anchor basically the tube here it is still a frictional rest there's still friction um, so another escapement that we sometimes speak about is the detached while there is no friction but <clears throat> it's already good that this is not a recall escapement and um, so basically the way this escapement is made uh, basically every escapement is made uh, it needs to give a little bit of power to keep the balance wheel powered and I will show that right now so I'm going to pause and then um, you need to go step by step so basically mm, this point somewhere now you see that this is going uh, to go and basically because the teeth here has a wedge shape it is going to be pushing a bit this way which leads to um, giving that tiny tiny bit of power it doesn't need much just to keep it going so now it's pushing it basically because of the wedge shape because it wants to go that way um, this gets pushed up in this case it's up um, giving it a bit of power and then that happens again and again and again so yeah that is how that escapement works <laughs> like I said I'm going to put it in the description of the video so you can check it out for yourself but now you have my explanation so it is serviced now um, and as you can see the amplitude is much better um, so I'm going to put it all back together, try to bend that second hand back into place because it was a little bit bent and then I will see when the watch is back together. I have the case of the watch in the rotary tumbler, so that's going to come out um, nice and shiny pretty soon. So yeah, i see you back when that all is put back, put back together. <laughs> So here we have the pocket watch in the final stage. You can see case nice and polished. Um, so yeah, that was um, a look at um, a pocket watch with a cylinder escapement and a bit of explanation about the cylinder escapement in general. I hope you found this video informative, you liked it and see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>